you're listening to Your Beautiful Day on the Gratitude Radio Network. Welcome to Your Beautiful Day on the Gratitude Radio Network with your host, the mother of gratitude, Jen Wardhall, and co-host Pearl Sharenza with Women's Successful Living, where laughter and inspiration ignite your inner child. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Neil Haley Show, also simulcasted on Your Beautiful Day in the Gratitude Radio Network. And I'm excited to welcome the program. Today, it's just going to be Pearl Sharenza. Pearl, how are you? I'm excited about our guest today. Hey, I'm doing great. Good to see everybody. Welcome, everybody. Yeah, I'm excited, too. Um, I'm excited to hear Denise's story and all the great things that she's doing. And um, we're missing Jen, but we're carrying on as usual. So let's get going. Absolutely. So I want, I'm excited to welcome the program. Uh, celebrity, entrepreneur, uh, and much, much more photographer. I guess you add that to the uh, to entrepreneurship. Denise stuff. Denise, thanks for stopping by. Hello. Woo. <laughs> it's hilarious we didn't do this on purpose that both of you guys were in florida if i would have known that especially that close to each other we could have made oh, this happen I, isn't that crazy how I know. Does this happen it's crazy that's we wild could we could have easily. definitely hooked up we're literally like tw uh half hour from each other right now this is so technology so cool though right right yes, but, but i know but we could have been six feet apart but in the same room and sharing the same screen <laughs> Yeah. Yes. And, and definitely remember that, that to be in the same room, but not right next to each other. But here's the funny thing I, I laugh about is just, you never know these types of situations. And soon when the Gratitude Radio Network has its own building, and if Denise was in town, then that would have been perfect because she would have been in the studios oh. and I would have never been in Tampa. I would have been in my great confines of Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh's fine now, but in November, I want to be in Florida. And that's coming soon as we woke up this morning. I think it was a frost day for us. So. Already? Yeah. Okay, no. Yeah. No, look, come, come down, come down. We had to turn our fans off, Neil. <laughs> All right, yeah. so. I did, I had the ceiling fan on. It's very annoying to watch a video with that, so. Okay, so you see, you're, I remember you talk about the photography, but let's talk about, did you always want to be an actress? Is that something you wanted to do? Uh, you know, I always loved um, telling stories and making people laugh. So really, the job that I haven't yet done in my life um, is I would like to I would like to just do stand up. Like to be honest, I don't think I've ever said that on a podcast. Um, but if people who follow my stories, um, they follow them because I find the humor in things in life, and that to me is that that's the essence of spirit for me is. Finding, finding the funny and still going on in whatever it is. Um, so I always love telling stories that at the end of it, make people, um, make people laugh and, and feel better. You know, there are people that tell stories because they want you to think and think something different. And, and that's cool. Um, I, I'm a little lighter and I just like someone to maybe just feel a little better about something. Maybe, you know, hate their frizzy hair a little less because I've, I've given them another way to look at it, you know, or maybe not think their parents are so annoying because I've told them some other way to look at it. You know, I sense. literally do videos. I take false eyelashes off on camera because I want women to know, look, women don't wake up looking like this. All those women you see, those influencers, look at the difference. You know, you go from looking, th you know, 20 to you take the lashes off like, oh, she's 48. You know, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> right. I love it. It's so true. And that we were talking earlier before this, we got started about, you know, I work with women and we talk about being your authentic self, you know, and we are, you know, everything you see on the magazines and the TV, they get help They're, You know, they look just like you and I, when you take everything and strip it all back, they look just like you and I. And I think it's, I think it's so important that you share that message. I love that you want to be a stand-up comedian. I think oh. that's so cool. I oh. love that. So we're going to put it out there for you right now. We're going Thank, to you. For you. Thank you. I'm having a hot flash right as now. As an entrepreneur, Denise, you always yes. have to open yourself up to other things. So talk about like, when did you say to yourself, this is what you wanted to do is act? How old were you? Um, I, I was 15 and my mom was a, a single mom, divorced. You know, this was in the the early 80s and um, late 70s, early 80s, and, and it was very difficult to be an actress at that young age when your mother had to work three jobs because 
you know, they didn't have Uber then, and you had to have an adult drive you to appointments. And so um, uh, she would, I would do little weekend classes and she would meet people and I had a few um, appointments, but the, the bummer was she, I couldn't get to the auditions. And, um, and so it wasn't until I was 18 or 17 and got my own car that I was able to do that. Now living in Los Angeles, affords you the opportunity certainly back then when the entertainment industry was largely just there to be able to do that and i mean nowadays you can you can start a, an entertainment career in any town because so many auditions are done done this way exactly. you know and um so i i just i loved you know i went when i graduated high school um i got a full scholarship at ucla and i thought wow I don't want to go there for acting because I thought that's a little bit to me. I just thought it was a waste of a full scholarship because I could take acting classes from super professionals anywhere in Los Angeles. Right. So I thought I'm going to do something noble. I'm going to, um, it was engineering. I went into engineering because I like math. I like figuring out stuff. Mm -hmm. So I went into the engineering program and after the second trimester, I realized, Oh, these fellow classmates, they didn't get my jokes. <laughs> you know, like I, I spoke too fast. I always found like humor, you know, maybe off color humor in, you know, a formula. There was just, there was so much humor to the seriousness of these engineering classes and they didn't get me. And, and it was at, it was the end of that first year at UCLA where I thought, I'm not still sure what I want to end up on college wise, but I know that whatever I do for a living, I want to be around people that, that laugh at my jokes and get me. And so I, I um, auditioned for NYU. I went to New York university oh. and um, you know, they, they tour around and, um, and my grades were good enough. My mother was poor enough. It's very crazy how you learn these things later, you know, how to get into such an expensive college, um, you know, and, and I'm saying that because when my daughter wanted to go a couple of years ago, I'm like, wow, we weren't quite broke enough and her grades weren't quite A plus enough, so she couldn't go. Um, but in my case, my grades were good enough. My mom was a single mom and I went to NYU and I studied um, photography and directing and stage design. And those were my people. Um, and then I went back to LA and then just took everything I learned in New York and because I loved cameras, you know, and I wasn't so much thinking I was into, interested in theater. So I went back to LA and, and started, started working. I would assist with photographers. That was my waitressing gig. Um, do a little hair and makeup. I was 19, 20, 21 years old. And I'd go to an audition and then go do makeup for the photographer and just sort of self-taught myself, you know, and truly actors were are, are have always been entrepreneurs because you never know when your next paycheck is every time you book a job or almost book a job you've got to promote it like i was doing postcards to say hey i just got signed with this agent and i'd send them out like that was the tweet back then right that was the instagram post back then so yeah i kind of got my my chops in what it takes to hustle um, in a time when I wouldn't say I was hustling for a job. Like back then you wouldn't say you were hustling because it meant something different. You know? Right. <laughs> right? True. See, all right, Denise, you just keep cracking these jokes. We're waiting <laughs> for this uh, to go on Instagram live with a, with a comedy skit. I'm going to okay, call you great. out for that for sure. Okay, good. So I, so talking about, you know, what led you down the path for acting, I'm sure through those years, you've met many people um, that have probably influenced your, in your life and your acting and some, some of your choices you made. Um, who were some of those? Like, who, who would you be able to say is the person that sticks out the most for you? Oh, gosh. Um, you know, I, uh, it's, it's makes me seem so, so old. Um, uh, Andy Griffith wow. was a big one. And, um, you know, of course, as a kid, you watch him on, you know, those shows, but I did, I did an episode of Matlock and he had pages and pages of dialogue and he wasn't a spring chicken and, and all the guest stars on the show would just have a couple of pages and he had everything so memorized. 
he, he was the producer of the show. He was the star of the show. And he gave a shit about every person on that set from the cameraman to the makeup people. He'd come into the makeup trailer. He brought a juicing machine. Juice man had just hit the world. People yeah. weren't juicing back then. Well, Andy Griffith wanted to make sure that his fellow actors were were healthy and he did he said cabbage and tomatoes it's good for your skin <laughs> and this was 1993 90 1993 um and and he just he was very playful and and any any question i had he would say you know you just you just ask me any question that that you want you know and don't 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 feel embarrassed and um and then the other person that always immediately comes to mind is mark Harmon. And I worked with Mark Harmon on a show and it was probably like my fifth episode, but I get very excited every time I'm on a set and people think that it's my first job, which was, was an interesting um, uh, thing to find out that, that I guess if, you're, if you've been in it a long time, you have a little more of a, you're, you're less excited and, and it shouldn't be like that, right? You should, you should just always be like, oh, I'm on a set. And, they'd be like, oh, wow, is this your first job? And I remembered people asking me that. And I'd be like, no. And they're like, oh, well, Mark Harmon uh, saw me walking around the set. And I just love how things are fake, but they look real, right? So um, it was a TV show uh, called Reasonable Doubts. And it was, um, it was just before he did NCIS. And I was looking at something and he came over and he said, um, uh, I, I said, asked a question. And he said, oh, is this your first job? And I thought, I'm going to say yes, because I found that people feel extra indebted to help someone when it's their first job, right? So I said, yeah. And he's like, well, okay. And he just took me under his wing for that entire, it was like a, a three-day shoot. And, you know, if you stand, if you, if you move this way, if you need to move out of your light, keep your feet planted and just lean. And then when they say action, boom, you're right. You'd, you're right in the light. But if you step away, you may not step back in the right place. I'm like, thank you. And, and even in the makeup room before he arrived, um, and again, this was 1994, 95, a lot of people didn't have cell phones. He had a cell phone and we got a call that he was running late because on the 405, somebody broke down and he pulled over and stayed with the woman and made a phone call you know, to, ha to, to help her. So like just an average person, he was already a superstar, but he was in the time before cell phones and he wanted to help someone who had broke down, you know? So seeing that those, that, those kind of celebrities who just care about everyone from the top down, I was like, okay, that's, that's how to live. Now, all you've worked in a lot of very interesting guest starring roles. Your biggest <laughs> jobs are in, are in soaps, but uh, there's some fun guest starring roles you had in your career. I mean, if you look on Wikipedia, I mean, I'm like oh. some of these favorite shows you brought up Matlock, but uh, right. what was your, besides your soap uh, experiences, what was your favorite other project you did? Oh gosh. I mean, you know, um, it's funny. I, have you ever heard of a, a martial arts champion named Don the Dragon Wilson? Yes. So I was his leading lady in one of his uh, martial, uh, no, blood, the Blood Fist series. Really? So I started, in, I started in Blood Fist 5. Oh, wow. Okay. And, um, I, uh, and I was his leading lady for that. And the funny thing is, you know, he, he's such a pussycat. And, you know, back then there it wasn't so much Google. Um, and it and it really has been since doing that film that I've gotten to see, you know, as the internet shows you like his his history, and I'm like, oh my gosh, this guy like could crush me, um, and uh, and j just to still be friends with him and to have him know like every to have him tell me like I'm so sorry that the, the passing of your mother last year, like to have these certain celebrities follow you on social media. Um, and, and have stayed in touch with you has been like really lovely. And, and so Don the Dragon Wilson, that's just, uh, I just always get a kick out of it. I get a little fangirl still that, you know, he thinks the world of me because he gets to see how I take an avocado and smear garlic with it and eat it. And he's the first one to comment, you know. That's great. I think that's cool. Fun. So I'm going to bring us back for, to um, Soaps for a quick second because Denise, 
I re when your name popped up, I was like, okay, I know your face and everything. And since I can remember watching TV, my mom and my grandmother, my granny watched Days of Our Lives. Okay. And I remember you were on an episode there. Yep. And I, was like, I know that. So, and it's kind of funny because that episode, that whole storyline is coming full circle right now. So I was like, oh, I wonder if she's going to be alive now. <laughs> I know. I know. I've been getting, in fact, I did a, um, I did an Instagram um, post just last week that said, they mentioned my name, my character's name. Does that mean I can get a residual? <laughs> Hashtag asking for a friend. Um, see the funny, I'm finding the funny in it. I love it. Um, but yes, it's been, um, you know, I even, I, I got in touch with through social media. Apparently there, the guy, there was a guy in love with me. I, I just love that. Like, I was just this character that was brought in as a midwife to help deliver a baby. And now they've created this whole other backstory. And that's, that's the magic of soaps, you know, yeah. um, anything can happen. It's like, yes, she went out. You didn't see any blood when she was killed. You just heard the gunshots. So who one knows? never knows. So, so between the two, which, which would you say, what's your, um, what's some of your favorite that you've done between the soaps and the other? What do you get drawn to more? Um, you know, there's, um, uh, it's, it's different how I would think it now. I, I suppose back then I would say the guest star TV roles because there's sort of this intensity and this newness. But, but now I look back and what I, what's so wonderful about the soaps and certainly Young and Restless because that was, you know, like well over a year on that is they really become your family. And, and even though, you know, I got super close with, you know, Mark Harmon or, you know, Andy Griffith, it was really only like, whatever, two weeks max. But when you're on a show for over a year and it's got that nine to five feel, you know, you check in, you grab the coffee and the donut, you sit in the makeup chair. I mean, you feel like you've got just some regular average job, you know, the makeup artist, she's doing your makeup, you're talking to the hair guy or the person next to you. And, and there's something really relaxing about that because their schedules are not like a soap. It starts at filming at six in the morning and they wrap by like usually six at night. Sometimes if there's a big party scene, it goes longer. Um, whereas like these TV shows, it can, it can just continue and continue. But the soap is written to be filmed in a box, in a studio. Sometimes they do location, very rare. Um, so there's a real civilized comfortableness, you know, and I was able to be there a bit more for my daughter as well when I was on the soap. But I also was continuing my photography career when I was on Young and Restless. And so, you know, I would shoot from like six in the morning to one o'clock. I'd have a client photo shoot at like 2.30. They'd come to my home, open the door and go, wait, did I see you today on my TV? You know, I'm like, yes, you did. Come on in. Come on in. Okay, let me see your clothes. All right, let's get your hair and makeup done. Wow. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, I love that. I, I went to, a, I'd go to like Supercuts in Studio City in between my filming because when, you know, on a soap opera, you could play one day over a course of six days. Right. right? It's like, John, I have something to tell you. <laughs> Cut to Tuesday. <laughs> this is really going to take a lot out of me. Um, can I have a coffee? I need to tell you something. Cut to Wednesday. <laughs> right. So it can go on. So you have to keep your hair all during the week and your nail. You've got to keep those things looking the same. And then you get your schedule and you're like, oh, I'm off next week, Wednesday and Thursday. Okay, I'm going to get a little trim, you know. So I don't like to spend a lot of time on myself, you know. And um, so I would just go to like a Supercuts and I'd sit in the chair and they'd be like, so what do you do? Oh, I'm an actress. Oh, are, are, would you be, have you, were you ever on anything? I know well, I'm on a show called Young and Restless. And like one for one, they'd be like, and I'm like, what? They're like, what are you doing here? Oh my I'm like, goodness. and I'm like, I don't know. I, I think you're good, right? I mean, you look cool. You got spiky hair and tattoos and weird piercings. I think you're an artist. You're not going to mess this up, you know? Oh and, um, and I'm like, and I'd rather like donate like a couple hundred dollars to my favorite organization than give it, you know, like right. you're worth the 25 bucks. Why wouldn't I, uh, you know? 
So what made you transition to entrepreneurship? You were a photographer. So it was like your own photography business then. So, oh yeah. 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 And I, I still do that. Absolutely. You had that entrepreneurial mindset, but what kind of brought you that? What, so from the beginning to survive in Hollywood, you probably had to have yeah. that entrepreneurial mindset. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I mean, even like just emotionally, when you're not, when an actor isn't working, they can't just like, well, certainly many years ago to create work, to keep your mind satiated. Um, you've got to have a camera person. You've got to have a crew. You've got to have a team. I mean, at least even a musician. Um, and this is in no way a dig to, you know, my husband and other musicians in my life. You can pick up a guitar and you can satiate that art, you know, but I'm not going to just look in the mirror and go, <laughs> you know, um, so, um, do you know cr creating a photography studio out of my garage was like oh heaven for me and then i started to then when digital cameras became amazing video cameras right then i started to shoot music videos because actors would always say because i'd shoot a lot of actors and they're like if you ever start directing please like i want to work with you and um so then i started doing music videos and got some awards on that and, um, and then I directed a film and it went to Blockbuster, which maybe you remember this place called Blockbuster. Yes, I remember <laughs> Blockbuster. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that was just a, uh, such a learning experience to have never been to film school. And, um, you know, and being a, uh, even being a woman back, you know, in, tw in what was it, in tw two, 20, year 2000, 2000, 2001, um, and shooting it on film and then going to a film market and selling it, you know, selling it to a full moon entertainment. And, and I just, what I wanted is I wanted it to get on the shelf. I just really thought, wouldn't this be cool to be on the shelf at Blockbuster mm -hmm. and not just, um, not just like at festivals, like festivals are cool, but I felt I owed it to my actors to, to be out there in the world, this little vampire film that I did. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I got a whole new respect when I would go to Blockbuster. I'm like, those films might be crap, but I, uh, there's a, a lot of chutzpah and perseverance and passion behind every film that's sitting on this shelf of what it took, you know? Well, and, and, I, see and that, I, I, I see that in you. I mean, you come across that whether you've got such perseverance and I mean, a great, I just love your, your comment. It's just, it's so awesome. And so I think it's in watching you, you also started to the skincare product. So what, how did that all come that. about? Like you, you, <laughs> the photographer, I would imagine like, and your photography, let me ask you this question first. Is it a certain, is it branding? Like, do you do branding for people or just any, what's your favorite photography? And then how did that bridge you into the skincare piece? Um, so, you know, I, I photograph artists, people, um, and, uh, you know, musicians, actors, and, um, you know, of course you do like some family stuff, but that's, you know, I'm, I'm, I really, I really prefer just that single portrait, right? And, um, and I started to find that the women, the people, the clients that really needed my magic um, were women yeah. and specifically like women over 35. And I, cause I, you start to see all the baggage as soon as they sit down and I pick up that camera, it's like explosions of, of fear and, and lack of confidence just come out and, and years of maybe feeling like, wow, I always thought I was pretty. And then I saw this picture and I guess I'm not, right? So all that stacks up and then that's what's sitting in front of me. And so my job um, is, it's easy to find good light and have a good camera, but, but where the real art form comes is really making that person forget about all that and just be there in present time in the room and just, just emote, just be lovely. Because I tell them, I'm like, look, Photoshop, can help get rid of a little bit of there's a little dark circle there that maybe you couldn't cover with makeup or the 10 pounds that the camera might put on that can all be tweaked you know if the collar looks weird or when you sit a certain way you get a little fold we can clean all that up but what photoshop can't clean up is that comfortableness in your eye mm. that i don't give a crap i i i'm cool with myself so that became something i got addicted to having that interchange with primarily my female clients, which then led me to um, skin is so important and not covering up too much of anything, like just, right. It, it's, um, and so 
there was um, a cream that I had sort of uh, developed a bit with the with these other women, and um, and I'd been using it personally for a couple of years, and I would start to get a lot of compliments on my skin, and um, and so then I had a lot of friends starting to sell stuff on Amazon, you know, and a lot of entrepreneurs were, you know, I'm I've got a realtor business, but I'm also selling skincare, or you know, I have a coaching business, but I also sell you know, um, almond milk bags. <laughs> and so I, uh, I just thought, wow, I, can I make this in a, a larger amount? And so I did. Um, I don't sell it on Amazon. Um, I did for a bit, but um, their warehouses were too hot and too cold. You know, it's very natural. And, um, and women loved it so much. And they were like, well, what's next? What's next? And I'm like, oh my gosh, it was so hard to get the cream, you know, you get it stabilized, get the right packaging, get the name, the box, the VIN code, all, the website, the, now you want more. And so that's when, um, after my mother had passed last year, we had this opportunity to come to Florida and be able to actually, from Manhattan, you can't have a warehouse unless you spend millions, um, but to be able to expand that company, um, and the timing worked out well because it's it was a little easier to live here than it was in Manhattan just before the world did its thing. All right. Well, all worked out for sure. All worked out for you. Yes. yes. Even with the pandemic, it's worked out in the way that you were ready. And here you go. So, Pearl, now I know you have that gratitude question to ask. Yes. So, Denise, what one of the things we always like to know is, the moment of gratitude in your life that you, that comes to you, no matter, it doesn't have to be career. Just what, what is that moment in life that you can think back and was like, wow, that just gave me such gratitude. Show, can you share that with us? Oh, wow. The, me, the first thing I thought of was um, five years ago when friends pitched in for my husband and I to take our first vacation. And we went to, to Sicily where my ancestors are from. And I wound up finding family I never knew I had. And it makes me cry. Um, but it, it's, it's, it, it had both ends. It had, it had friends gathering together to, um, uh, during a time when we, you know, weren't going to just upend ourselves and, and go and take this big trip and they felt we deserved it with everything we do for the community. Um, so that just filled me that, uh, that, that humanity. And then, um, to find family that, um, that I didn't know I had because my family was getting very small, you know, and people started like, you know, I don't, my, I don't have a lot of brothers and sisters. The one brother I had, you know, is no longer with us. Um, the divorced family and, and just so ha finding that um, was so opposite from my life of Hollywood and red carpets and good skin and flat stomach and shiny hair. Like none of that mattered when, when I was in this tiny town of Sicily and, and somebody called somebody and they drove two and a half hours to come meet me with a box of pictures because they, it was of my grandmother and they were actually third cousins. Mm -hmm. And they drove for two and a half hours. Whereas I feel in these times, people might go, you know, um, uh, Facebook friend me. And, you know, if I'm ever in the area, we'll hook up, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, yeah, just to, to have found that, uh, that, that, family is so tight and it so matters and even if you've never met them before it's so immediate it's something with us italians yes <laughs> <laughs> i didn't want to underscore the italian thing because yeah. everyone has that but i but really we have to underscore the italian thing <laughs> now denise um so basically where's the best place we can connect with you and learn more about your work where's the best place we can go well you should there's definitely you know denise stuff um, on Facebook, there's Denise Duff on Instagram. And make sure it's with a C, like Denise. And there's DeniseDuff.com, my website. I try and keep it all easy. Denise Duff, Instagram, Denise Duff, Facebook. Yeah, and you get the skincare, everything is all available at your website. Yes, and that's InYourFaceSkincare.com. If you want to just go right to the skincare, InYourFaceSkincare.com. No parabens, no dyes, no oh, dimethicones, no... N none of the yucky yeah. stuff, everything you could pronounce that, that goes on your skin. Um, because you know, this world's getting a little, a little funky, a little toxic. So wherever we can take a shortcut of health, 
Exactly. Um, I try and take advantage of that because, you know, I still enjoy pizza. So I balance things <laughs> out. And That's so awesome. the one thing I also wanted to say uh, is that we're calling you out to do a comedy skit on your Instagram live. We're waiting <laughs> on that. And I think that you and Pearl are going to connect sometime this weekend, maybe. Oh, we'll yeah, we're going to connect this weekend. And I think I think I think we can, we can do a little host, a live co comedy show. <laughs> yes, yes, let's do something, anything live. Oh, wait, stop this, stop. This. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> I've had kids during Zoom interviews and now a cat. So we'll add, uh, uh, it's interesting, Tom Arnold's uh, little boy jumped in on one of my interviews with Tom and then another actor from uh something like star trek but it's the one that's the spoof on it <laughs> his oh, yeah. jumped into so it's it's funny what can happen during zoom interviews so uh <laughs> that was awesome anything else to add pearl before we say goodbye to denise i just want one question i didn't get to ask is why the name of the skincare in your face where'd oh. you come with that name well, I was looking originally to, for a name that, that had something to do with my Sicilian and Italian heritage, because so much of the, the ingredients are inspired by that. And I was coming up with something like Mediterraneo or Sicilian something. And I had a meeting with a, a young branding professional who's a friend of my daughter's. And when I told him those names, he, we were just sitting in this coffee shop in Silver Lake and he's shaking his head. He's like, come on, Denise, those are two too boring i mean you're so in your face and i said oh great what am i going to call it in your face cream and he immediately takes his laptop and he starts typing the logo and he did this whole block thing and he shows it to me and i called my husband i said hey does anyone own the in your face skincare website and he goes yep I just bought it for 10 bucks. I'm like, okay, it's, I guess that's the name. <laughs> that's, a, that's a great story. It's a great name. So it was th thanks again for stopping by and I appreciate it. All right, guys, that was the, the Gratitude Radio Network's Your Beautiful Day. Take care. Thank you.